Well guys, today is the day I've been waiting for. We are at John's Specialty Service Machine Shop and we've got all my parts out on the table. I've been waiting my turn in line since last February and now it's time to finally do the machining on my engine. I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. I'm gonna show you every step in the machining process and you guys enjoy it, let's get to it. So before we can begin the machining process, each engine is gonna spend 24 hours in an ultrasonic cleaner. This is gonna help remove the rust, paint, grime, grease, silicone RCD, and get the block ready for the bath, which is gonna go into the parts cleaner next. And then from there, we can begin the machining process. It's been eight months since I dropped my engine off at John's Specialty Service, and I tell you guys, I'm so excited. I've been anticipating anticipating this day for so long, and it's so awesome to come in here and look at every little tiny part of the machining process and share it with you guys. I'm trying to capture as much detail as possible so I can get my car back together and start enjoying it back with the GTR community, going to events like ours day, going to track events and racing my car. So you guys stay with me. I'm going to try to make this the best video I can and try to capture some stuff that other channels haven't captured with RB26s. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and leave me a comment down below. So in this process, this is the boring machine. We're actually going from an 86 millimeter stock piston to an 87 millimeter HKS Step 2 forged piston. And what's pretty crazy about this machine is how fast it works. This is real time. It's just boring pretty quickly all the way through that metal, which is pretty damn impressive. More than anything, well, I'm just double checking that it's at least, so I gotta set an end cut down here to make sure that, so the machine stops where I want it to stop. Nice. Uh, it always varies, you know, if you have a new machine. This machine is really cool. It's decking the block, you get it perfectly flat. So it's gonna have a perfect mating surface with the head and the new head gasket. And this is unlike kind of what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting this to, this machine to be this way. I was expecting something to kind of like move back and forth and sand the block rather than, uh, I'm not even sure what this machine is called, but it, it's freaking awesome. It's pretty crazy. Even if just one pass, you can see how this is flattening the block, getting it smooth and ready for a perfect mating surface with the head gasket. This decking machine is pretty cool. I had no idea how decking or anything worked, but look how clean this is. This is how much he went down on it. Super clean. And the only removed as much material as about a human hair off the top. This is an RB25, and that's a Rottler machine. Got all your different settings up here. With my block. Here's your line honing tool, and the cutters are made out of stone. RV. RV. Don't we have a spline drive that needs to be installed on somebody else's crank here? Over there, I highlighted the uh, variation on the highlighting. You know, so I got set gauge. 
gauge or something. Okay. So the small side of the spec is how long, how I always do it. So at least I got a, a point when I do all my measurements from. Okay. You know, you yeah, so the first step was, you know, we set it at the minimum spec here and we torqued it up to the uh, 38 foot pounds. That was with the factory bolts? That was with the factory bolts. So as you can see here, we're within spec technically, we're plus nine to plus seven, so it's the big side of the spec, we're a tenth away from big, you know, plus okay. six, same thing, nine to seven, so it's pretty consistent as far as it's just on the big side, so technically, if you want to say it's within spec, you could run this the way it is. I mean, it still doesn't mean once you put your bearings in your block and you check your end clearances, you're going to be happy with it. Yeah. Um, but based on a piece of paper, it's good to go. And then what will be the differences, you think, once we torque these down at a higher torque? It's going to it's going to shrink it probably one to two thousandths most likely, and we'll once we get to that point, we'll document it and see what the difference looks like. Okay. You know, Italy, Germany, all those things. The bore gauge is in here. and well four but our four is because you know we had one that was down here at plus two to plus five so um, it's as good as it gets but it's on the tighter side of our spec awesome so it should be good to go and if we need to open it up we got room cool so john's been nice enough to me here that we're doing multiple RB26 blocks on all the different machines. These are not all my block, they're different customers' blocks. We can kind of see every step of the machining process. So we've got one here on the boring machine. We've got one here on the line honing machine. We've got another one over here on the deck machine. Another RB sitting over here. That's your RB. And this is my actual RB. So still have to do all the processes to this block that we've seen on the others. So this is the torque plating and the machining process. It's very important that you use the torque plate because when you put the head on, this kind of simulates torquing down the head so you can get your cylinder bores perfectly straight. So why this is important, guys, is this torque plate simulates the head being on the block. And when you tighten the head down, it slightly warps and twists the block. So this ensures that your cylinder bores are perfectly straight all the way through and that's important so your ring clearances are actually touching the cylinder wall so you don't get a bunch of blow by in your engine. It's going to last longer it's going to perform better. This is a newer CNC style pony machine and it can get the cylinder bores perfectly round from top to bottom. I don't know if you guys are as excited as I am but I'm like a kid in a candy store. This is pretty freaking cool just to watch the entire process happen in person live. that these guys let me come here and be part of the experience of watching my block the machine. It's a tenth of a thou straight top to bottom at this point in time. Nice. Torque plate on, so if you can get a, where the bolts come down, it pulls the metal. So you mm -hmm. have a dark spot, you come yeah. to this side, you have a dark spot right at the bolt, and then right here you have another dark spot. tenth of a thou top to bottom on this thing so it's as good as it gets as far as nice precision goes yeah, the marks are gone now and you know what beautiful cross hatching in there no not yet stinked oh yeah you, you know before you looked at it, it was kind of light so mm -hmm. now, now i put a light to well that will be day one i hope you guys enjoyed the tour so far 
I learned a lot from John, thank you very much. He took his time and basically explained everything off camera to me, how every machine works, what the processes are, all the tolerances. I'd like to film all that stuff, but you know, uh, some of that stuff he just, I, I gotta soak it up myself to enjoy it and uh, be there and, and, and in the moment with the machinist who's been doing this for 17 years. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Check out uh, John's specialty service. I'll put his information linked down below. He's got a Facebook page and uh, I've got a picture of his business card if you guys wanted to call him too. So if you guys are in Seattle, Tacoma area locally and you're looking for any type of machine work done on any type of GDM stuff, he has all the machines to get into those fine tolerances. But it's pretty badass to have John have all those different RB26 blocks there basically kind of led me around the shop out of order of the, the processes of what he would normally do just to show me every single step in the machining process of so the line honing the decking the uh, uh, boring and then the uh, cylinder honing and all that type of stuff it's uh it's pretty cool to see all that stuff in person it's, it's awesome and the machines are they're so fast and it's it's just crazy it's 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 kind of what I expected, but also not kind of what I was expecting to see. I decided I'm going to close today's video out at home. I will do a part two, so we'll go back to the machine shop next week, and I'll finish the video with you guys on installing the PRP block brace, all the different machining steps that's involved to do that, as well as the PRP spline drive oil pump. So we'll do that as well. Uh, GTR is here. It's chilling, guys, outside. I need to get it finished and back in the garage but we've been working on projects for the wx in the garage and thank you so much to you boys that bought some of my parts i'm getting ready to ship out the n1 manifolds these are sold and the tomei turbo elbows are also sold to the turbo outlets so i gotta get these shipped out today i'm gonna go ship them right now and the tomeis are somewhere buried on the shelves there but anyway guys thank you so much for watching let me know what you think in the comments down below of the machining process it uh, was definitely a fun day. I really enjoyed learning and uh, having John teach me. He's owned that machine shop there for 17 years. So it kind of taught me a little bit about every machine, the process, kind of his thoughts on, on machining things to certain specs, certain tolerances. And yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to get this thing back together. And they are also gonna be helping me finish rebuild my head. They usually don't like to do head jobs because they're so busy, but he's gonna go ahead and help me get my head redone so we're gonna get uh, get everything taken apart get the uh, valves I don't, I'm not, I don't know everything that needs to be done but everything's gonna be measured it's gonna be reshimmed we're gonna get the HKS step 2 V cam bigger camshafts in there and I'm super excited they're sitting there on the shelf so I need to get this thing done but I tell you guys after waiting for seven months I am beyond excited and uh, yeah this is a dream of mine to finish this build and we are getting just that much closer to making this thing happen. So once I sell the last few little parts, I still need to sell the top secret titanium front pipe and the HKS 2530 turbos. Once I have those sold, I'll have the money to buy the G35 900 and get the rest of the Spectrum Motorsports turbo kit shipped in. Um, so once I have those parts and I get the machining, the, the machine work's gonna be done in about uh, 10 days or so maybe two weeks so then I could drop the engine off at the machine or at the engine builder and then from there like it's basically reassembly time so we're getting there guys stick with me if you guys missed last week's video I announced that I will be partnering with Artec Performance out of Australia I will be going single turbo with their new exhaust manifold and going with the G35 900 if you guys missed that video I'll have a link down in the description down below for that as well as the unboxing video for the PRP block brace and oil pump. PRP is also partnering with my channel on the build. So excited to have big companies like PRP and Arctic Performance because you guys know the Australian builds are the best. I'm excited to have a little touch of Australia in this build. But it was so awesome hanging out with John at the machine shop. We spent three hours together just talking, walking around looking at all the different machines, him explaining the processes to me. So thank you so much, John. He's a good guy. Like I said, I'll have his information for you guys down below. Make sure you check out his Facebook page 
and give them a call if you've got uh, any 2J RB26, RB25, any Subaru EJ stuff or FA stuff. He can do all that stuff. Honda V VTEC boys, he can do that that type of machining for you guys too. He's got the machines that can get in the nicer machines that can get in those tighter tolerances to give you a really good build and that's what we need. So if you guys were curious about RB26 machining and machine work, kind of what it looks like, what's involved, I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next week for part two. Take care. Step 2 VCAM. No shit. Today's video for you guys that are curious about the RB26, if you're considering adding HKS VCAM to your engine, you may be